I apologize. I have no slides. I think I, I try to be short because the, uh, the, I think the discussion after is going to be fruitful. Yes, as you as you mentioned, I I'm like a schizophrenic person. I'm half in the Sweden and half in the Croatia. I am by training I'm a neurologist and geriatrician, and my very special interest is cognitive neurogeriatrics. But as a geriatrician, I have to cover the entire field. So I am advisor uh, for the Croatian Ministry of Health concerning geriatrics. Why, after uh, after becoming the member of uh, European Community, uh, uh, Croatia was pushed to to start with specialization in geriatric medicine. So, with other words, there was no specialization in geriatric medicine in Croatia. There is no undergraduate uh, training, and we just finished with a postgraduate course, which is two years course for every uh, person who took the specialization in geriatrics. Geriatric specialization is formed as a four years uh, uh, long period with the two, 22 months of the STEM uh, uh, subjects of internal medicine subject and 22 months of the subjects related to the geriatrics like neurogeriatric, psychogeriatric and some internal medicine related to geriatrics. Problem of the specialization as demand from the Europe is that you have to have infrastructure and there is no uh, there is no departments of geriatrics classical geriatrics uh, in, in Croatia which raised the question of external education in the some period of time which i try to now to connect croatia with at least scandinavian countries that in the some period of time the people can auscultate with a mentor in the uh, uh, on the on the geriatric clinic so in the undergraduate uh, period, the only um, aging uh, or geriatric related subjects was related to pharmacology and social medicine and gerontology. Gerontology is pretty strong, but this is a normal aging. This is not classical medical uh, term geriatrics. Um, in other postgraduate, uh, there is a big encouragement that the GP and the family, uh, and the family related uh, uh, doctors in the local community supposed to take this postgraduate course because I think while building the geriatric service definitely will rely on the GPs as a first hub who is a contact of the, of the families and the patient. Uh, re I can go in detail a little later. Uh, on the question number two, uh, preoperative risk, as a colleague from Turkey have said, you know, there is absolutely no uh, influence of so-called geriatrics comparing with the Sweden. I, I'm not saying the Sweden is is uh, extremely uh, uh, extremely different from the other countries, but in Sweden at least you have influence of, on the hip fracture and geriatric, uh, geriatric uh, uh, um, specialization because the, the so-called orthogeriatric is pretty development in the Scandinavia countries probably due to the lack of D vitamin and uh, osteoporosis. So preoperative risk is, is, is uh, estimated by the internal medicine and mostly anesthesiologists. Uh, uh, but not related to the classical geriatric service. And this on the very end, uh, third question, how functional status and frailty of patient. I mean the terminology of sarcopenia and frailty was probably not yet entered the, the field of the everyday medicine, especially GPs. So the functional state is definitely not taking in the GP settings where the GP have 70 patients per day and try to, to deal with the only emergency situations. So GP, despite this supposed to be the first contact, they have no time and probably less infrastructure to, be, to deal with the much more details, functional state and, and, and especially sarcopenia and the frailty. So the patients which are coming to the GP settings, if they're 80 plus, if they succeed to come, they, they just deal with, with the most emergent situation. But uh, uh, GP has duties 
uh, every day two hours to, to reach the, the, the patient at home. Uh, uh, e even it's less likely that uh, if, it's, if it's not extremely emergent situation, these patients used to stay, used to stay in, in the, uh, at home. So only difference is probably cognitive disorders in the 65 plus population, which is based on following that uh, contact with the GP is uh, 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 accelerate the start of the testing of the patient in the GP settings with a simple minimal test or MOCA test of RUDAS text, tests, uh, but not more than this. The GP has a problem to, to exclude the reversible dementia or reversible cognitive impairments because they have not allowed to send a referral to CT. Patients supposed to see neurologists, which on the feedback will get allowed to make a CT, which I think is logistically is pretty unusual, but this is a state of art currently in Croatia. The idea is that the GP is supposed to get much more wider responsibility, at least to use the, the, the CTs. And after that, a referral to the memory clinics, and this can take six to nine months before you are you, you, you get to, to, to the classical assessment, which is also, I think, pretty not acceptable for, for these, type of, these types of problems. Uh, I will stop here, and I think we can continue to discuss by the subject uh, how it's going. Thanks.